Hi everyone and welcome to this video. Once again I'm in Poland in Warsaw, the capital city of this country. And you're about to see a train trip from Warsaw to Gdansk, a city that is located on the Baltic coast. Let me give you some basic facts about this trip. It takes slightly less than 3 hours for a distance of around 370 kilometers on this type of train, which is known as the EIC, but more on that later. At this moment you can see the skyline of Shrudmeszcze, which is the city center district. Over 115,000 people live there and Warszawa Centralna, the central train station, can also be found there. That is where my itinerary begins. Warsaw Central was opened in 1972. It has four platforms and eight tracks that are located below ground level. While it certainly is an important railway station, it is actually not the number one in Poland as far as passenger numbers are concerned. But if it isn't Warszawa Centralna, then which of the following is the busiest railway station in Poland? Please feel free to leave your educated guess in the comment section below. I'm going to publish the answer as a community post and I'll also put it in the video description later. Around 12 years ago, Warsaw Central was revamped for the European Championship in football. And between 2015 and 2016, a mezzanine was added as well, which you can see now that I enter the station. But in spite of these renovation works, this railway station retained its functional character. However, from what I know, the opinions about it are divided. Some people would like to see it demolished and replaced, while others still consider it a prime example of modernist architecture in Poland. In the station you can find several shops, including a supermarket that is open till late in the evening. McDonald's and Starbucks are here as well. As I'm getting to the platform, I'd like to unveil what kind of ticket I have booked for this trip. Today I'm traveling in first class and that adventure cost me 199 zloty, which are something around 42 euro. It is worth mentioning that I booked the ticket on the day of the trip. By the way, in case you enjoy that sort of content, please don't forget to share, like and subscribe. That really helps my little channel and you don't miss any new releases, especially if you click on the bell icon as well. Alright, so this is my train for today's trip. It is marketed as an Express Intercity, hence the abbreviation EIC. As always, let me introduce you to the technical characteristics of this marvelous piece of engineering. The locomotive that propels this train belongs to PKP's class EP09. It was built by Pafavak from Wrocław between 1986 and 1997. So this is the first class coach and they have those compartments in here, each with a total of six seats. I wasn't familiar with that type of train at all, so I didn't find the switch for the light at first. But don't worry, you're going to see the cabin in better lighting conditions in a moment. At the beginning I was the only passenger in that compartment, but later a Polish gentleman joined me, telling me all sorts of interesting stories from Cold War Poland. And see, that's the thing with these compartments. If you book them as a group, that can actually improve your level of privacy. 
in case you are interested in getting to talk to other travelers, you have increased chances here as well. But if you're a person that wants to be left alone with maximum privacy, then that might prove to be difficult. Here we have the panel where you can adjust the loudspeakers, the lighting and the temperature. My predecessor in this compartment was obviously rather interested in politics and has left me a lot of reading material. Anyway, we are now leaving Warsaw to the east, before heading in northern direction towards the Baltic coast. Here on my channel, I put a lot of emphasis on detailed information concerning topics around the actual trip. So let's talk a little bit about the Polish railway system in general. The most important thing to understand is that the railway business in Poland is controlled by the Polish government, which owns 100% of PKPSA. That is basically the country's state railway company. It owns several subsidiaries that are responsible for various railway-related tasks, including infrastructure and IT. Today, the Polish railway consists of a system length of approximately 19,000 kilometers and over 2,600 railway stations serving hundreds of millions of passengers each year. One of the subsidiaries that you have seen in the first animation is PKP Intercity, which operates long-distance trains such as the high-speed EIP as well as the EIC. The latter stands for Express Intercity and describes high standard trains that connect large cities and can reach a top speed of 160 km per hour. Back to my trip again. We are now crossing the Vistula River near the town of Chef. In a historical context, it is interesting that this city used to be German and was called Dirschau. After the First World War and the Treaty of Versailles, it was handed over to the Second Polish Republic, though. Enough history for now, let's continue with the onboard product. One of the amenities that comes with traveling in first class is this limited form of onboard catering. Essentially, you can have a drink and a snack. I mean, it's not that amazing, but I appreciate this little act of customer friendliness. The Wi-Fi internet connection, on the other hand, did not work for me. Alright everyone, we are now somewhere in the outskirts of Gdansk, around 6 kilometers away from our destination. So as we are arriving in Gdansk, let me give you my evaluation of this trip. First of all, I want to state that the EIC is a good way of traveling in Poland. While the train sets aren't as sleek and modern as those that you may know from the EIP, they are still comfortable. You get a drink and a snack without additional cost in first class, which is something that not too many railway operators do. Also, I would argue that the EIC in this video can be an alternative to the plane. Because if you think about it, a flight from Warsaw to Gdansk takes about one hour, but with all the hassle around it and the transfer from the city to the airport and vice versa, the trip on the plane takes more than just one hour. So the three hours on the train are still quite competitive. Alright, that's it for this time. Thanks for tuning in and have a great day wherever you're watching.